I broke a 440 tap in this stainless steel part and decided to try one of these overseas EDM machines to see if it would actually work to take the tap out. Uh, I hadn't seen many videos on them running, so I thought this could be useful for people. Um, so it actually worked really well. I'm surprised how well it worked in a way. Um, so first I'll kind of show you the machine running for a second here. Um, again, this is with the smallest electrode in a number four tap. And you can hear it sort of pulsing away and eventually it gets into the middle. You see it gets far enough that it's gone through the tap. Um, so then what we're going to do is pull it out here. So it pulls out. Um, and here you can see the electrode right through it. So it worked quite well. Okay, so here's what the machines look like. Um, so when you put it on the bench, you have the main unit itself. Um, and it's got a bunch of switches for setting the current and stuff. It comes with some electrodes, which are just these brass rods. Um, as well as this kind of drill truck that's mounted on an electrically isolated um, part there so that you can mount it into this magnetic holder it comes with. Um, so most of the work is actually going to be in just setting up here at your workspace. So, you know, the holder looks something like this. Um, you have one thing that's the power that's giving you the, um, the current pulse for the actual EDM, and one is the, the servo, they call it, which is just a little motor. Manual was a bit of a, a pleasant surprise. It's actually quite good. Um, goes through what size electrodes to use for various uh, taps and drills you might be going through and the, the current settings for it. Um, watch out, you, you will need some safety you know, considerations because you're at 70 volts um, and you're generating a bunch of UV uh, with the sparks potentially. So make sure you have the right protection, um, which I don't know if it goes through all of that. That's the only sort of concern. Uh, to give you an idea of what's inside the machine, um, what I'm going to do is I'll take it apart as well. So starting with the um, servo, they call it. This is the head that sort of uh, pow you know pushes the electrode into the machine. Um, it's got nice stop switches, so it won't just kill itself running into it when it hits that stop switch. And you can adjust that in theory to to stop at some point. But you know because you don't know how far the electrode's gone, it's not as useful. But I mean it's still good. It won't damage itself. Um, so yeah, inside it you can see there's just this little uh, servo motor or motor, DC motor, uh, that drives uh, the shaft that moves the um, electrode up and down. And the micro switches are just wired in series. So, you know, it's, it's a pretty straightforward um, design. There's no feedback at all besides just power, you know, one way for up, power the other way for down. Um, but I guess it works, you know, well enough, as I found. Uh, the main unit itself, so you take all the screws off, um, the main unit, and sorry, I didn't realize my camera is shifting slowly here. Uh, what you'll find is that there's not too much inside it. Um, so there's one side there, some big capacitors and big power resistors on top. Um, if we take a look at the other side, we will see the power supply and the inlet power. I always check, you know, these types of machines if they actually have a good ground connection. So um, I'm just going to add some uh, washers to that, some serrated washers. Um, always a good thing to check. So once that's done, uh, happy to look at it some more. So you can see the power supply here. Um, this is, you know, the main part. So you get 70 volts. Um, it claims at 11 amps uh, from this power supply. So that's what to use for the Enium electrode. Um, and then 12 volts for the you know, the servo motor presumably as well. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, kind of a key part of this is that it's giving you the power out for that. Um, you've got a bunch of the switches on the front side there um, that let you, uh, we'll see in a second, switch in some different settings and stuff like that. Uh, you have this little driver board. So this is the actual driver board for the servo. Um, that's about the only electronics, you know, in the thing beside the power supply. So there's, there's nothing on the back side of the board uh, just traces. Um, so yeah, so it's a quite simple design, actually, you know, I think it's pretty, pretty interesting, you know, for such a simple design, how they did it. Um, yeah, and you see the power resistors, 30 ohm resistors with a big fan up there. Um, yeah, flipping over to the other side, there's these uh, capacitors. So they actually have a pretty high, like this 450 volt rating. Um, they're being used for pulse, so that might be kind of some over rating of them. Or these are really just like motor start capacitors, so maybe they're just cheap. Um, but yeah, they connect it directly to that, what they call high frequency output, um, which is really just the capacitors discharging on the EVM electrode. So, so they don't even like drive that 
EDM electrode or anything. It just relies on the electrode touching the metal to give you your pulses. Um, yeah, taking a look at the capacitors, the, that high frequency output basically goes um, through into the capacitors and then into these power resistors on top. Uh, and what you have is the, that high frequency switch, again, they call it high frequency, um, just turns on the power resistors um, that give you your current limit uh, into the, the capacitor bank, which then will let you discharge on the EDM. And, um, from the other side, we can actually see that basically these current adjusting switches, um, so each one turns on one of those 30 ohm resistors. So by default, you just have the one middle resistor and then you can turn on parallel 30 ohms each time. Um, and that gives you a lower resistance, so a higher current is how they do the adjustment. Um, the little servo controller board is again kind of interesting um, because you can see you know there's two wires go to the servo output which is what you expect so this is the the 12 volts to that dc motor um, that i took apart the other part of them go to that um, potentiometer on the front panel that says up down so um, as you adjust it it's going to go up or down the other wire goes to the resistor and it's actually used to detect when the electrode has touched the metal so when it touches the metal uh, this board reverses the, the servo, um, or they call it the motor, so that it's going to raise the electrode to break the uh, break the arc. So, yeah, this stepper switch, I don't fully know what it does. It just seems to parallel another capacitor. In there, but, um, yeah, so it, it actually works, you know, as I said, amazingly well. So this was afterwards. I then realized I the hole is too small to be practical, so I actually used the next size electrode and went through... Um, the thing and yeah it worked all quite well so i'm just using fresh water in too i was kind of lazy to, to do it all up um but yeah so after running the bigger electrode through we can see a bigger hole in this thing so hopefully you found this useful